Welcome back. Cover One Draft Weekly, John Helmkamp, Daniel Harms, and we are joined by an incredible guest that we cannot wait to pick the brain of. Uh, it is the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy. How are you doing, Jim? Good, fellas. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Always. Thank well, you for being stoked, here. Stoked to have you. Yeah, this is this is great. And obviously, we're going to get down there and I'll, I'll make sure that I run into you in person in about a week. Um, but I'm excited to just kind of preview it and talk through some stuff and, and really kind of dive in and just kind of hear hear what to expect this year. Um, yeah, I think off the top, we were really curious about how you got plugged in with the Senior Bowl to start with, what that kind of journey has been like and the rise to where you are now. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it was a family decision. You, we were all just talking before you pushed play on this thing um, about our families and your kids. But uh, it was a family decision for me. Mobile, Alabama is my, my wife's hometown. I was scouting for the Patriots back in the early 2000s, living in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, it's a hard lifestyle, man. You're on the road that's not glamorous by any means. You're on the road like 200 nights a year. And our son was about a year old, um, and we were far away from any family and uh, came home from a long trip. And my wife was just like, we need to get we need to get around some some family if I'm going to be doing doing a lot of this parenting by myself. So uh, we moved back down here to Mobile in God, what year was that? 2006, 2000. Yeah, 2007. My son was two. And uh, so then when this job came open, I was in Seattle and I was really happy. There it was an unbelievable organization to work for. John and Pete were incredible. Uh, miss all those guys. But uh, this was a great opportunity for for to continue to do what I love to do. And that's, you know, evaluate players and and uh, but be home for my family. My son was getting to be high school age and, you know, playing football and basketball. And uh, I'm happy to say, like, I didn't miss a single game. I went to a lot of practices. I was really, I was there. Uh, I was really present. So this job is, it gave me that opportunity. And now my daughter's a freshman and I'm um, getting out of here in a little bit to go out to her cheerlead in a, in a basketball game at four o'clock. But, uh, but no, so it was the family thing that really made me decide to do it. And then, and also just professionally um, you can get in a rut, um, you know, regardless of what you're doing. Right. I mean, you do something for a long time. I was on the road 18 years and, um, I was in, in a little bit of a rut with the scouting thing and just on the road and the grind. And um, so this has opened up a skill set that I never really had to use. You know, when you're when you're on the road, you're watching players and going to schools and typing reports and rinse and repeat um, this job. I've had to wear a lot of different hats. I mean, I didn't have a social media account before I took this job. Um, nice. I was you do now. Asleep. And it's a big one. <laughs> I, I, do, I do now, man. Um but I feel like I had to. So, so, no, I mean, just, you know, managing a staff, building a culture, being responsible for that, putting my name on something. I mean, it's being with a group of people that um, there's so many what people on the outside don't understand is there's so many people behind the senior bowl, like 400 volunteer committee. We've got a support staff that comes in for game week. That's basically a family. I mean, Dean Kleinschmidt's been our trainer for 53 years. Dean was a head trainer in the NFL for over 40 years um, and he stayed on here at the senior bowl. And we just, we've got this incredible family here. So it's, it's been awesome, man. It's been, um, it's been a really cool opportunity. That's incredible. Like just hearing that, that story about how that all of that time you put into it. And obviously when you're on the road, it's, for most people, I would assume because you know I was I was in the military myself in terms of get, having to travel around. A wife is in the military, and right now she's currently away from us. So having to be away from your family is never a fun thing to do. So being right. able to settle down and build what you've helped build is an incredible accomplishment. And, and speaking of how you're able to get to where you are now and how the Senior Bowl has grown this year, juniors are now able to perform and participate at the senior bowl. And so how would you go about describing the impact now going forward that more juniors are going to have on the senior bowl? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's something that the 32 teams have been pushing for, for a long time. I mean, I don't know how many conversations like Kevin Colbert, the ex the former GM of the Steelers and I had about it. And, uh, it's, you know, it came to fruition. You know, we, we had a call with the league office in August and they gave us a heads up that it might be happening this year. So again, it did people ask like, it did, did that throw a wrench in your process this year in, in November when they broke that news and it didn't, we were watching all the juniors and stacking all the juniors. 
so that that didn't change it where it changed the process was the actual invitation uh process part of it so that that made it a lot more fluid um you can't invite 120 or 30 seniors right out of the shoots in november mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to have a bunch of juniors available so um we'll see i'll see if we see if i did a good job or not um you know we tried to we tried to save certain you know spots at certain positions and um you know unfortunately some of the guys didn't get senior bowl invites and jumped in the portal and then when we you know didn't get some of the juniors or juniors you know went back to school that we envisioned coming out um we circled back to the next best senior and they were already in the transfer portal so um it was an, it was an interesting year for sure and it but it's a great thing for it's it's a great thing for the teams forget about the senior bowl um i we do this job for the 32 teams i i, I truly mean that i feel like I, i'd say this over and i feel like i work for two two groups the city of mobile in the 32 gms and so all we're trying to do is bring the best players down here period so it, that's great. You know, you get all these juniors, you, you you lop off like this year, we got almost 20 juniors, I think 18, 19, 20 juniors. You take those guys off the bottom end of the roster who are probably late round picks. And then you replace them up top with guys that are, you know, mostly top hundred picks. You're going to mm -hmm. have a much better roster. So, um, you know, we've always had a lot of star power behind the game, but uh, I think that's, that's going to be ramped up in these next few years. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it had to have been, quite the adjustment in just the first season, figuring out the logistics of, of the invitations and stuff like that. I'm mm -hmm. sure you learned a lot about it. You guys as a team will take that forward into next year when you're looking at putting together the rosters going forward. Um, quick joke, you're talking about just being down there in senior bowl. Is, uh, is, is Tyson Bajan's dad going to come back and arm wrestle? I need to know if we got a cameo on the sideline <laughs> of him going to Tom Pelissero, you can call me daddy and, and putting the hand down in the mat. It was hilarious. I don't know, man. That's a good idea. That, that might be. Uh, we, might be able to, we might be able to get a sponsor on that. Uh, Tyson's dad may be down for it. Travis might be down for it. Um, but no, no, unfortunately not, man. I, I, I love Tyson. His, his dad's awesome too, man. That, that was a fun year. It was fun having those guys down here, and it was, it was more fun watching Tyson go two and two as a starter this year for the Chicago yeah. Bears. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's got to be great. Um, I'm I'm really curious to know how the NIL has impacted things, uh, your experience of talking to players, talking to agents, talking to, to organizations ar around the league, both professional and college. How is the NIL and the way that the transfer portal is shaking things up and seemingly just everybody seems to be entering the transfer portal and, and getting NIL deals. How has that changed your kind of, I guess it doesn't change the scouting at all, but your ability and in, in the process of recruiting these players to come down to the Super Bowl. Um, it's a great question, man. And first of all, I'll say this, like NIL is a great thing, you know? Um, yep. I think it's great. The players are getting compensated. It's, I don't see any downside to it for the player. Um, the downside for it, for like coaches and where we're at in college football right now that the average fan doesn't want to hear about because they just think, oh, these coaches make all this money. Well, you know what? They really don't like some of these head coaches do, mm -hmm. but not everyone in, in college football is millionaires. Like let's get, right. let's, let's get that straight. Um, and the quality of life for these coaches is, is not, not any good right now in college football, but like for us, um, it wiped out day three of the drive. I posted something on Twitter the other day about this. And again, I'm not belly aching cause we got the players we wanted to get, but, um, so it doesn't affect it's affecting the draft though. I mean, there's, I can't tell you how yeah. many good day three players went back to school this year that could have come out in this year's draft and been fourth, fifth, sixth round draft picks. And, to me, where where I feel most bad right now is these players. There's no one really to educate these guys. The coaches want them back, right? Of course they do. They're trying to win games and keep their jobs. Um, you know, the NIL, there's, there's NIL money out there. These players, I mean, you see a couple hundred thousand dollars waved in your face to go back to school. Most of these guys are jumping at it rather than doing the finances of it of like, okay, if I was a fifth round draft pick and my you know, signing bonus is 800 grand. If I make, you know, my signing bonus is 800. And then if I make the 53 men roster, I'm going to make another 800. So you're mm -hmm. talking like 1.6 million as opposed to the 200 grand. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm talking through a scenario that yeah. I had with a player this draft cycle. I mean, unfortunately, a lot, I, I got put in a position a few times this fall that is a little uncomfortable with where coaches would like 
have me sit players down and try to talk through the process. And, uh, and to me, it was uncomfortable because it, it didn't make sense for all these guys to go back to school, you know, and I, I just got off another podcast saying the same thing, like another year in school isn't going to benefit some of these guys. I mean, if you've got some rawness to your game and you need more reps and game experience helps, absolutely. All right. Well, since uh, we need to get cut off there on the last one, we'll just go ahead and go out to the next one because this year it, it's there's a lot. There's a lot of players that have been talked about first round guys. Like, let's just look at the quarterbacks. Like, there are some legitimate names here at the Senior Bowl, like, as opposed to last year. It wasn't the, you know, a bunch of top names coming out, but we saw a lot of really good quarterback play. And those players, like we talked about Tyson Pageant, who comes out, was two and two for the Chicago Bears. So, what are you expecting to see out of this group in 2024? Yeah, it's a, it's a better group. I mean, last year we had a seven-year stretch with a first-round quarterback snap. So, you know, we, yeah. we, we're used to having a guy up there at the top down here at the game. Um, yeah, it's a better group. I mean, Bo Nix and Michael Penix are probably the, the headliners for most people. Um, they were two guys we certainly wanted to have in the game when the season started. And and uh, and I didn't know they'd both be in, in uh, New York for the Heisman, you know, yeah. as Heisman finalists. And uh, two of the faces of college football. They had two really cool matchups against each other. I think that regular season game was, yeah. you know, that was just, I, I was home that weekend. I didn't go out to a game. Um, and man, that's the best game I've watched from the couch in a long time. And uh, so to get those guys back down here and make them teammates will be cool. Watch them rep like one after the other during practice with Sam Hartman uh, will be great. And then, uh, you know, Spencer Rattler, Joe Milton, Sam Hartman. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really good group. And, and even w wait till you see Carter Bradley throw the ball. I mean, this guy's kind of right in our backyard, you know, be playing in his home stadium. But uh, I was watching he and Bo Nix and Drake May work out the other morning. And this dude can freaking throw it now. So it's a it's a good group. We're excited about this year's group. And, Mike, I mean, shoot, Michael Pratt. I mean, yeah. it's the last yeah. guy. And Michael Pratt, I, I think Michael Pratt's going to be a starting NFL player. I, I'll be Ooh. I'll be surprised if he gets out of day two. Um, I think I think he's the guy that, that – starts for a long time in that league i really do i think he's kind of the sleeper of this group and nobody's really talking about him but i think they will once we get out of get out of senior bowl week well we might have to put his name in our uh, show for thursday night here daniel let's uh do a little bit of film study on the i kid. love it because I'm a, I'm a big believer in michael pratt too, <laughs> yeah, and me too. these, these too. two lane guys well tasha spears last year there wasn't like a ton of talk about him coming out then he blew up usc we saw the senior bowl he now He's basically going to assuming the starting running back for the Tennessee Titans. Like these guys can play, so yeah. I love the call. And he, yeah, and, and Tajay's coming back to Mobile this year. He just texted. Yes. Me. Oh, sweet. Back. Yeah, he's coming back for practice. So um, yes, that's awesome. His, his his best. Like he he and Pratt are really close. When I left the South Alabama game, week one this year, I mean Pratt was fourteen of fifteen for like three hundred yards and four touchdowns. But mm -hmm. uh, he texted me. He was like, "Get that damn invite ready for my boy Pratt." And then. Uh, and his best friend let's is go. Jaquan Jackson, one of our wide receivers. Those two oh, are like, let's go. They're like former roommates. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I just found out Tajay's coming back. It's gonna be fun. Oh, that's great. Can't wait to see him down there. Um, you are talking to a born and raised Oregonian here. My mom, <laughs> U of O alum, was raised a duck fan. So obviously I'm very familiar with Bo Nix and what was going on between him and Michael Penix. That yeah, that regular season game back and forth, just body blow after body blow is incredible. I wanted to ask you about kind of some of the thought process that goes into roster construction in terms of how you separate these players into each roster. Are you intentionally putting uh, Knicks and Penix kind of next to each other so that evaluators can see them back to back? What's kind of some of the thought process that goes into how the rosters are constructed? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit with that one. Um you know, but but really the bigger thing is people ask, you know, we used to be the North and the South. I went away from that a few years ago. We're American National. The easiest way to remember it is the, nas the National is the uh, is the new North with the N and the N. And then in uh, the Americans, the old South. So uh, the American team will have <laughs> all the SEC players on it. Um, <laughs> you know, so we, we want to have all the SEC guys on the American. I think this year, the only exception, we, we put two Florida players on the national just because because of the center. We needed snappers. We needed an equal okay. amount of snappers on both sides of the ball, and we already had three three um, SEC centers. So uh, we try to keep those guys. We always try to keep the teammates together. You know, like if you're a Ducks fan traveling down here, I don't Jackson want Jackson Powers Johnson. 
Yeah, I don't want some ducks. We got five ducks in the game now after we added Evan Williams last night. But I don't want to. I don't want like a fan base to come down here and be like, "Well, who do we root for?" You know. Um, and then, and then the last thing, you know, we want competitive balance. We want a good game on game day. Um, so we try to, we, you know, and again, it usually happens where one position group on one squad's a little stronger than the other side, and vice versa. Um, so no, it's that's kind of how it goes down. But this year with the quarterbacks, with, with Penix and Knicks, um, I just thought it'd be good to see both those guys throw back to back. Yeah, I love that. I'm excited to watch them go back to back too, man. It'd be a lot of fun. And these these quarterbacks, these, these, these rosters, you've talked a little bit earlier about how you just had your first round draft pick streak broken last season, uh, last season. And this year, we know that it's going to start back up. And you look at some of the great rosters that the Senior Bowl has had over the past years. If you were looking comparatively from 2024's roster so far to some of your pasts, how do you think that this one matches up with some of the best you've had? I think it is the best we've had, and, and, and frankly, it should be. You know, with this new junior yeah. rule, if we if we didn't have the best roster True. that we've had, well, then shame on us. We we didn't <laughs> do it right. So uh, I do. I think it's the, I think it's the best roster we've had. I think it's a great offensive line class. I mean, we lost Graham Barton from Duke, which hurts. He, I mean, mm-hmm. he would have been a first. He still could be a first round draft pick. Um, I was really excited to rep Graham at, at center all week. He was going to get a lot of work there. He and I, he and I went to dinner this summer with uh, Riley Leonard. They were here in town, and mm-hmm. uh, we talked about it. He was fired up to come down here and play a bunch of center. So um, that one hurt. But you know, the first year I was here in 2018, um, we had five first round offensive linemen. And I think we could we could get to that this year. I think there's seven or eight guys that have a good chance of being first round offensive linemen from the game. And uh, you know the receiver group last year's receiver group was was great with Rashi and Jaden Reed and Puka and and uh, gosh that list Dontavian Wicks and just kind of yeah. goes just a great just a great group last year. Uh, but this year I like this year's receiver group. I like this year's DB group. You know it helps when you get you get you get five to six junior safeties i mean james williams this is college safety we're playing him at linebacker here primarily but you know five junior safeties in that secondary and a junior corner and kalen king that certainly beefs up the the defensive backfield so no it's uh we're, we're happy you know we're, we're we're happy with how it ended out the, the scouting staff did a great job um got to give a lot of credit to our you know friends around the nfl that, that helped us put this thing together and, and like i said this game's for these guys that's what we mm-hmm. do it for we do it for them so you hit on a lot of the position groups. Do you think there's any kind of one position group and the depth of it in this year's group that you have that kind of stands out above the rest? The depth in a in a good way or a bad way? <laughs> both. Good. How about both? <laughs> sure, both. Uh, the quarterback depth is really good. I mean, we got seven, and that that, that group's good from top to bottom. Um, the receivers, the offensive line. Uh, I like our interior D line group compared to most years. I think the the two thinnest positions this year, trying to put this thing together, were off the ball linebacker and uh, and tight end. So those were those 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 ran out pretty quick in terms of draftable names, draftable grades on our board. So, um, but we got the guys we the, we got the guys we wanted to get. And uh, now, if anything happens in the next week, uh, that's going to be a different <laughs> story. But uh, but no, but but it's I'm happy with with all these spots. We have good players come at every position. Well, interior yeah. defensive line has certainly helped when you get a couple of guys out of University of Texas that are gonna go Oof. real high. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. yeah. No, those those guys are good players. Brayden Fiske, a guy from up your way from in Michigan, you know, former Western Michigan player. Yeah. It's gonna be really cool to have him down here with Marshawn Nealon, former teammates. Those two guys are fired up to be together again. I think Marshawn, I think both those guys are underrated. I think you're going to hear a lot more about both of them through the process. Uh, Fisky's just super disruptive. You know, he's one of those guys that goes in there and creates havoc for other people. Um, you know, I think the, uh, I think where, I think people are going to miss Cass Brayton as kind of an overachiever type guy, and he's not. He, he, he's a good athlete. He's got really good initial quickness to blow stuff up, and he can run. Uh, he can legit go chase stuff. So, um, and then and then Marshawn is just a, a really cool football player. I mean, he's he's tweener-ish, like in terms of where you fit him, but he's got heavy hands and he plays his tail off. So, um, you know, he's a guy that's already, a lot of teams in the league have day two grades on Marshawn Nealon. So um, he's starting off this process as a, at a pretty good spot for the league. And now we'll see how, see how, he, how far he can take it. 
Yeah, I love that. You you had mentioned tight end really quickly, and I, I want to get off on a little bit of a tangent here because I'm very interested in the development of the tight end position, specifically in today's NFL. Yeah, you've got the, the big, big names that have come out. Obviously, Luke Musgrave last year was at Mobile. He now is part of the Green Bay Packers. He and Tucker Kraft have formed a really nice one-two punch at tight end there. But collectively as a unit, do you think that tight end is kind of being disservicized in college football when trying to get to the NFL. It feels like the talent pool has kind of shrink had kind of shrunk over the last few years. And I just wonder have you had any insight into what you think is going on at the tight end position specifically? Well, I don't think they're being utilized. Great. Um, I, I don't think the college game uses mm-hmm. tight ends well enough. I mean, that's, and there are certain areas where the college game does a better job than the pro game, frankly, mm-hmm. Um, tight ends, not one of them. So they're, they're underdeveloped in the run game. Not a lot of teams use them. So, again, I'll tell you what, like being in draft rooms, there's no harder player to like sell in a draft room than a pass catching tight end that can't block I mean, yeah. tight ends. Unless, unless you're an elite, elite, you know, Kyle Pitts type athlete, Yeah. tight ends coaches want nothing to do with those guys. <laughs> um, so, so no, it's it's hard, man. You you rarely see them, you know, put their hand in the dirt. That's why a guy like um, AJ Barner from Michigan this year made a nice jump going to that Michigan program and seeing him block <laughs> and did a lot of the dirty work with uh, you know Colton Loveland on the other side yeah. is a, is a playmaker, um, but AJ did a lot of stuff in the run game where I think a lot of teams are going to want him want him on their team. You know, over the summer we had a free agent grade on AJ. You know, we ended up with him in the fifth round. Yeah. So um, I thought he made a nice jump this year. But yeah, it's. It's certainly an underdeveloped position. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think there's like a talent drain there. I don't see a drop off in like ability. I just don't mm-hmm. think that that uh, they're getting developed great at the college level. Get developed or used, I should say both. Okay. I like it. Yeah, no, I think AJ Barn, like you were talking about, did a, a nice job, not just in the blocking department, but also showcasing as a pass catcher. He's not a bad pass catcher. He's really good. I thought he was doing a good job through traffic, high pointing, things like that, showing off his his size. And Michigan loves using their tight end. So he got another opportunity next to Colson Loveland to be able to show what he can do. So, yeah, I, I'm with you there. And maybe I used the wrong, you know, talent wise. Just like you said, not being utilized properly makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on here a little bit. Um, before we do, is, is there a tight end that kind of sticks out to you? I've been watching a little bit of uh, Ben Sinat out of Kent, Kent State. Really, yeah. really like the game that he's been able to put together. Yeah, Ben's a Ben's a fun player, man. He's uh, And he's got a cool story. He was more of a hockey player. You guys can appreciate that being yes. from up north. Uh, he, was, he was a better hockey player in high school, according to him, at least. Uh, and his, <laughs> only, his only football offer was like a partial to – one of the FCS schools, one of the Dakota FCS schools gave him like a partial coming out. And, uh, you know, I guess he and his, his dad and uh, Chris Kleiman at Kansas state were like, were like, they grew up together. So mm-hmm. that's why, that's why Ben ended up out there. And he's a guy that uh, I'll say this about him, not to, to, not to knock the supporting cast, but it's not like there was a bunch of NFL skill players on the perimeter, like drawing coverage away from Ben Sinat. Like if you go right. into the game, and, and you got to stop Kansas State's offense. I mean, there's really one guy you need to take out of the football game. So um, I thought, well, for, for as productive as Ben was and whatever, he had 600 yards receiving or something like that this year, 40, 50 catches, like great job by him getting open. Great job by Will Howard getting the ball to him. Um, so, no, he's he is a cool player. He knows how to uncover. Um, he's a good athlete. Uh, he, he, to me, he's one of those guys he's – like safely a number two tight end, like safely a good number mm-hmm. two in the league. And uh, we'll see if he can see if he can become more than that. Yeah, that's awesome. Is there yeah, any, like, you particular... know, like he's, sim- he's similar to like, sorry to cut you, but like, no, like, Jake Fer- like when Jake Ferguson came out a couple years ago, yeah, you yeah. know, like, like we, everyone thought Jake was going to be a, a good number two tight end. And now look at him. He just ends the playoff game against green Bay with freaking 10 cut, 10, 10 catches and three touchdowns. So, yeah, you know, so you never want to put a ceiling on a guy, but I think safely, like you want to go into a draft room and tell your your GM and their head coach, like what the guy at minimum is going to be on your roster. Like Ben Sinat's a a, a, a number two tight end. And uh, who knows, maybe you, you hit a Jake Ferguson. So, um, but the makeup is, the makeup is really cool mm-hmm. as you would expect from a former walk-on player. Like he's yeah. certainly, he's certainly wired right to maximize his ability. Yeah. That's a, that's a great story. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I can't wait. I mean, the practice is where all the 
all the analysis happens, like a large majority of it, right? You get to see good on good. You get to see all these different drills. You get to see how they do with taking direction and how they, you know, apply things quickly and move forward from the coaching that they receive. Are Is there any particular drill that just stands out to you that you look forward to every year or any position group battles that you love each year? I mean, I, I know everyone loves the one-on-ones and I do too. Um, I like the indie period stuff. You know, I think you look around the, the bleachers and a lot of people are off like, you know, just like hanging out with their buddies and chopping it up and, and not, but like w- when the DBs are going through all their pedal work and um, you know, I think you can take so much away, you know, from an, just from an athletic movement standpoint and burst and quickness um, especially if the coaches are running those drills properly and the guys are running them with urgency. I think you can, you can see a lot of things that you don't get to see on tape in college. I mean, there, some of these DBs, you don't even see them pedal. You never see mm-hmm. them. You never see them in a straight pedals or a transition. Right. So uh, no, that's, that's what I like to do at the beginning of practice is just walk around every day and focus on a different position group uh, through any period. I love that. And well, I'll get into your back pocket on those. We'll, we'll try to walk <laughs> around and look at things. <laughs> I, I, I love that answer because, like you said, a lot of times we get to we watch these players at their at their at their college, and sometimes they're not asked to do everything one that they can do, and that they're going to have to do going into the NFL to that next step process. So, getting to see some of that is always a really important part of the kind of getting your eyes on something new especially like for a db like you have to be able to backpedal transition downhill how quick can you do that i, I love that and I, I always love all the drills i last year was a little bit harder for me with my daughter trying to get eyes on every single one and trying oh, to yeah. make sure yeah, make sure are, she's not getting into was, anything that's a that's a big that's a tall order you trying to like scout players and keep your keep your four-year-old happy at the same time good luck with that it was it was a lot of fun. She did a great job after we got settled down. The first day was more of a struggle. And then the second day and third day of practice, we're like, okay, we got a nice rhythm here and we figured out how to go about it. So this year I'm really excited to get eyes on every single drill and see how all these players are running, how they accept coaching. That's one of my, my biggest things is they're going to get coaching in between each of these snaps and reps and, and how do they adjust throughout the practices. And it's going to be, it's going to be so much fun to watch. So when we're looking at the evolution of the senior role, because it always gets, it feels like it always gets better. There's new things coming in all the time, you know, with these, how do you look at advancing the senior bowl? Obviously this year being juniors going forward, do you have any, anything that you got in the works or some improvements that you want to make going forward to the senior bowl? Well, yeah, we, we made some changes this year. I mean, I always think about our players first and foremost, we had some changes coming out of the COVID year, which, uh, which were really mm-hmm. beneficial. You know, that's a really hard year. Um, yeah. I mean, shoot, uh, like a week before the game, I was eating dinner with my wife. I looked at her. I'm like, honey, did I do the right thing here? Like, we're we're about to do this. Um, it was a it was a stressful year, but I'm glad we did it. Um, the league needed it. Again, like yeah. I said, I feel like I work for the 32 GMs. I can't imagine trying to go through a draft, never never meeting these players, sitting face to face with these players, and they didn't have the combine that year. But you know, some of the things we learned there. Um, You guys had never been down here, but like the player hotel, the second floor of the player hotel where I used to go as a scout to grab these players, like you couldn't get from the elevators to like where we have training table in the morning without having, I mean, it was a mob scene. It was agents and scouts and financial advisors and media people. Like you literally couldn't get off the elevator as a player. Um, And so like in COVID, you know, everything was stripped away. We, you know, we had, I mean, there was just, there was the only people down here were NFL people, right? Like we cut all the other events out of the week. It was practice game. Let's just get through that, have an evaluation week. Um, but because of that, I, you know, we'd wake up in the morning, you come down to breakfast and the second floor was so chill. And the only guy, you know, players are hanging out, eating together out in the common area space. And I'm like, this is what it needs to look like. You know, th- it can't be, Oh my God, like these players, like it in hindsight. Now this is how all every all-star game was. And so some mm-hmm. all-star games still are that way. Um, and now in hindsight, like I can't believe our players used to put up with that. Um, and then, so then the other thing is, you know, because of that, because of COVID and, and you not being allowed to just grab players whenever you wanted to grab a player, yeah. we had to, we had to formalize our, all our interviews, right? So they're at, they're at night now and teams are with players for a specific time. Um, 
you know, these guys know that they can walk around mobile now and teams can't grab them where they're told like, guys, their hands off. Like you, you, you have them during interview time. So, so that, again, it's just a, for, for a quality of life, if you will, for our players, quality of, of life during our week, it's, it's a much better thing. And so, but like we, we tweaked our quarterback interviews this year. Um, we're doing breakout quarterback interviews where the guys are going to be with, you know, they're going to be with teams for 40 minutes a piece. And then the teams can also make them part of it, what we call our requested interviews this year, and get them for another 15 minutes. So if you're if you're a quarterback and you're leaving an all-star game with 55 minutes with a team, like that's a lot of time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I remember back in the day, like getting Baker Mayfield for five minutes. I mean, it was, you know, it's so it's so that's better for our players as well. I mean, obviously we we've added like the concert, we're having the Counting Crows this year. We've had our, our Mardi Gras players parade for our our players because that you know that's a blast they enjoy doing that mm-hmm. we got our 75th gala this year so we're always trying to add things during the week to again for out-of-towners like give, give people a reason to come down here just yeah. rather than like hardcore football people that love going to practice and draft people um you come down here now you get to we're in the middle of mardi gras you get to experience mardi gras you get to experience the senior bowl you get an awesome free concert downtown mobile with counting crows like that's a cool weekend um, you know, if you come down on Thursday for practice, so yeah, we're going to work and we're going to continue to evolve. I mean, things are going to come up. This new junior rule is great. Um, but we're always, we're always trying to be forward thinking with, with how we do this. Great. I, I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. I know everyone is. And like I said, just last year, there were just people showing up to watch it, just to watch the event. It's not, like I said, not everyone is just here to, to do draft analysis and to scout these players. Some of them just, just want to come down and have a good time. And you guys have done a fantastic job of making everyone feel welcome to do that. So I appreciate what you guys have done and really turning this into an event and an, a, a fun time. And not just, like you said, for those hardcore people, even though we're still yeah, going to be there. Not everyone are sick like us uh that are that are watching hip flexion and ankle flexion and all that crazy <laughs> stuff during individual drills um I, I got one more question for you I, I noticed this year it looks like the uh the coaching staffs um i think this is the second year that you guys have done this correct where you've given the opportunity for for people to like coach up to to coach roles higher than what they do in the nfl what has that kind of meant to you and how do you think that that's helped uh both the coaches and the teams and the players everybody involved with that process yeah, I mean, I think it's beneficial in a lot of different areas. I'd say for the for the coaches, it expands their network. A lot of these guys are younger coaches that really have only been in one building. So when you when you work in the NFL, it's one thing if you're an area scout or or a road scout, you're out on the road meeting people from other teams. But if you're if you're a young coach and you know you're in Pittsburgh, like you're not meeting anyone. So it's a great great networking opportunity for those guys. It's good for our players because rather than just be around two teams when we had the full staffs for 73 years. I mean, you, those two teams went back to their facilities with unbelievable behind the scenes knowledge of our players. Now that's half the league. I mean, this year we've got 18 yeah. teams yeah. on the staff. So that's good for our players. I mean, if, if you know that over half the league, you spent a week around and if, if you did the right stuff, I mean, they're going back with good information on you. Um, so that's beneficial. And then, you know, especially I love it for the guys that are head coaches. You know, Jeff Ulbrich is a guy that I truly believe is going to going to be a head coach. Um, I think they score some points on offense at, in New York next year for the Jets. He's got that defense playing the way they need to play to, to win a lot of playoff games. So um, and Brick's a former senior bowl guy. Um, he's got a great testimonial about him playing down here. He's a one year starter at Hawaii that came here and ended up being a third round draft pick. And he's I mean, he's said he's told me he's like, Jim, I don't think I would have been drafted if it weren't for the senior bowl. So when he can tell that to our players and how impactful the week was for him, like that's got to carry a lot of weight. It carries a lot more weight than, you know, anything I could say. So um, excited to get he and Terrell Williams down here as our head coaches. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a good thing, man. It's been, it was fun last year. I'm looking forward to this year's group. We're already doing a lot of zooms and had a lot of calls as, as a group and uh, excited to meet all these guys. I can't thank you enough for, for joining us and for taking this time, just talking through everything. Uh, can't wait to meet you in person. Can't wait to get down there and, and shake your hand and just be a, a part of this for a week and be a part of all of this energy and everything that's going to happen around these players and getting getting them on one of the best stages in the pre-draft process is going to be an incredible thing. Well, thanks for having me on. You, I mean, you use the word energy, man. Like that's the difference between you know the what the game was you know in the past at the old stadium and this new stadium. There's just there's an energy at practice. There's a vibe at practice. Um, it's really cool. So I appreciate you coming down and being part of it. And thanks for uh, thanks for having me on the pod. It was fun. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully we can we can get some time with you after Senior Bowl too and kind of break down what happened. That'd be fun to have you back on if we can swing it. Uh, but for all the listeners out there, thank you so much for, for checking it out again. This is Jim Nagy uh, for taking the time with us, the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl. And we will be down there in one week getting eyes on all these players and, and can't wait to, to bring all that information back home. So thanks so much for listening.